Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to customize your footage to replicate film using Dehancer in Premiere Pro. Let's get into it. Dehancer software is an advanced imaging tool that allows users to enhance the color, contrast, sharpness, and film look to their photos and videos to create stunning film replicas as well as achieve that cinematic look. It utilizes sophisticated algorithms and a range of imaging processing tools to provide users with a comprehensive solution for transforming their photos and videos. It offers a range of features including automatic enhancement, manual adjustment controls, and a variety of presets that enables users to quickly and easily apply different film looks to their videos. Dehancer is widely used by professional colorists, photographers, cinematographers, and editors, as well as hobbyists and enthusiasts who want to elevate their photos and videos to the next level. Now, Dehancer did ask me to do this video. However, this is not a paid review, and I truly do think that Dehancer is a great tool for photographers and cinematographers. Its vast library contains not only film print stocks, but also negative film stocks, and these contain multiple levels of manual adjustable controls, so you can get the exact look that you want. It's important to mention too that Dehancer is not a LUT. A LUT is merely a table of color changing values. A LUT cannot contain all the characteristics of the film that determine the feel of the film image. Dehancer is a complete and comprehensive tool for film emulation, which recreates all the main characteristics of the film. At the same time, the tools in Dehancer work according to the analog principles and do not destroy the original color ratios of the film during its interpretation. If you'd like to learn more about this, they have a detailed blog that covers all angles of what the team at Dehancer is doing to evolve this plugin. They even have one on how they mock the film profiles from the lab. It's really cool. Today I want to open up Dehancer in Premiere Pro and show you how to boost that cinematic look on your next project. And if you like what you see, a discount code will be provided at the end of the video to help you start your journey with Dehancer. For now, I recommend downloading the free trial on their website to follow along. So let's go ahead and open up Premiere. First thing we'll do is we'll import our footage into the Projects tab. We have it right here, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and trim the clip to where I want it, basically already where I had it and then I will click and drag that down into the timeline. This is all assuming that you have your playbacks all set correctly, so your color space and profile is set accurately to what you're displaying. This is a clip I filmed for a clothing company in the summer in the Uinta Mountains. We were up here at golden hour and we got some really great backlit sunset shots uh, of the coat in action, so this was really exciting to test out. So right now it's playing back in S-Log as you can see. And the next thing we're gonna wanna do is go to our effects and look for Dehancer. We'll search that there, Dehancer Pro. I'm using version 1.3. Once we drop the effect onto the clip, you will go down in the effects controls and you can see all of our options here. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to film grain and then you're gonna want to turn that off. So let's disable that. And that way we'll have a nice clear playback of what we're going to create color wise. One suggestion that I have is let's actually go to sequence settings and use maximum render quality and then we'll click okay. Also really quick, just so we remember, let's go to export, click video, click the more tab, click render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. Uh, that way when we do export this, we will have the best possible renders. All right, next thing we're gonna do, let's go to source uh, under the input tab and let's click what camera we're using. So this is really awesome. All right, so let's choose our camera here and the drop down menu and that is going to be the FX6 S-Log3 and s 3cine with ISO 800. As you can see, we've added that big color pop right out the gate. Let's go ahead and click on what exact film look we want. So there's a lot of different film looks we can get here. Uh, the Vision 3 Kodak obviously being my favorite. Uh, there's 200T, 250D, 500T, and 50D. The T is standing for tungsten, and the D stands for daylight. I think you could use both the daylight or tungsten, depending on your preference, because the light was so warm at that time of the day that you could probably pass for either. But uh, just to keep it safe, I'm gonna go Vision 3 50D which I think adds a really nice look. So I'm gonna click this off really quick from how we had it. So now that we have our input set and our film look set, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave the push pull where it's at. So film compression, I'm not going to mess with. I think that is all fine there. Uh, I am going to up my black points a little bit because it is just a little 
flat looking. Uh, I just want to make sure my darks are dark and we can always go back and readjust this, but so far so good. And also here on my source monitor, you can reference back to the S-Log3 original file so you can see the differences that we're making. So we've got the black point set to three, got our darks a little bit darker. For our print, this is how you would want it to look if it was printed on to paper or you know glossy paper or film, um, however you'd want that to look. I'm gonna keep this linear for now. You can see here, the playback already is looking fantastic. This is with the dehancer off, and this is with dehancer on. Again, these flares are, very, are all natural in camera. We were shooting towards the sun at golden hour, so it's not requiring a lot of tweaks because the sun is doing a lot of the work here. But again, that's a standard S-log, and then back to what we've done so far. Let's open up the color head here, and I actually like this because this area is nice and blown out nice being sarcasm and if I bump these highlights up I can turn that a little bit more orange uh, just to kind of match the tone of the overall clip also in my midtones we can warm those up so basically in front of the mountain area in the back you can see that nice nicely warming up which is really cool looking so here we are um, getting a little bit warmer here again off and on film grain I'm going to leave just disabled for now I'm gonna skip over the halation tool, uh, but I do wanna go right into Bloom because this is, an, this is a fun tool to use. Let's enable it here, especially with our sun flare we got going. Diffusion and our amplified. Let's amplify it quite a bit. You can see it, there's 100 and there's not, so it's really kind of glowing off. There are highlights there. Source light, there's zero. There's 100 almost. Highlights. So it's looking really soft and kind of dreamy at this point. If you turn that off and on. Kind of like that little kick, especially later in the clip, what it does here when they're walking. It almost looks like a dream on, and here it is off. So we'll turn that back on. It just puts a nice glow around his head. I actually think that looks really cool. And then this sun flare is just looking epic right now with the colors that we have going. Um, let's go back to where the clip is a little bit brighter because I want to add a vignette. I might go back and adjust those blooms a little bit. You could play with that all day, especially in this clip. And we wouldn't use this entire clip. It is a one minute and 30 second clip of him walking. Uh, this was, I want to say, six seconds of this were used um, really heavily in those flare sections. So, so now I want to open up vignette. Definitely want to add a little bit of this to the clip. Just darkening those edges, making our focus go towards the center and the subject. There's a pretty large argument there. Who's the subject at this point? The coat or the dog? That, that dog was amazing to have on set. She was a sweetheart. Um, and then film breath. I'm going to leave how it is. And then our output total, which is the overall power of what we have done. So here's zero, which is, again, back to S-Log3. And then here's what we've done so far. Uh, you have your false color measurements, which are awesome. I think that's super helpful. Not a ton going on in this clip, obviously, because of how much warmth and how dark everything is going on here. You can see the highlights in the back and nothing even goes red. So that's really, really great. Um, this is a LUT generator here at the bottom. You can actually, uh, remember this is not a LUT itself, but at this point you have created a LUT. So if you had, if you filmed a lot of clips in this section of time, which I can tell you we didn't because the sun was dropping fast, you could actually export this as a LUT, which is really cool. And then you could use it on just the next clips and drop that in uh, here in Premiere. That gate weave is just kind of getting rid of distortion, I believe. I'm going to leave that off. So now let's go back up to film grain. So I left film grain open because we turned it off. And again, if we turn it on, it's it's pretty intense. Uh, we can cut that a lot by lowering the percentage amount of grain and then your film resolution and where you want it to appear mostly. Uh, if you want it to appear in your midtones, or let's make them appear in the shadows and let's get them out of the midtones and then kill them in the highlights. So that way it kind of just looks natural, natural film look. But I'll be very honest, I do not want any grain in this clip. I think this clip does itself justice for the time of day that we shot it. So I really, really like how this looks. Love those sun flares. 
don't think we need any grain. I just don't think it's necessary for this. I think it'll actually devalue the clip, uh, especially with these sun flares. So really satisfied with the color and what we got here. Uh, again, here is off and here is on. And then when they are walking, you get this nice, nice lens flare, really nice oranges, nice blooms coming off his head. Um, nice backlight getting hit. So I'm super satisfied with that. The functionality of Dehancer is extremely easy to use while creating an exact replica of the film look that you are trying to achieve. It's important to remember that Dehancer is an amazing tool, but it may not always be your solution to every project that you work on. However, it is still a must-have tool for colorists, editors, filmmakers, and or photographers. It adds a true organic film emulation to the footage, which makes it my favorite third-party coloring app on the market. Its simplistic layout makes it an accessible tool for both consumers and professionals. If you would like to try Dehancer for yourself, use code DRU, D-R-U, to receive 10% off your order. If you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out in the comments below. Thank you so much for your time, and we will see you in the next video.